Well, good morning, everyone. Let's try it again. Good morning, everyone. Happy New Year. It is so good to see you. I'm glad that you are here this morning. We've had two amazing services, one at 815. That was uh, almost full. The last service was full. And uh, we've got a great number of folks that are here at this uh, 11 o'clock service. And so thank you for coming and being a part. I want to say a special welcome. Uh, help me if I get this right. We've got uh, some folks here from the Way Church in Phoenix City. Is that right? Where are you at? Would you hold your hands up? Do you have a youth retreat? Is that what it was? Awesome. We welcome you. Thanks for coming. Thanks for sitting on the front row. That's a good thing. I hope you had a good retreat and you're doing well. And then uh, Jerry and, and Yo, do we have some students with us? Where are South Korean students from Pensacola College? Uh, wait, well, won't you stand? We want to welcome you guys. It, well, you guys stand over here. Welcome all these students. That's pretty awesome. Thank you for being a part uh, to our Pensacola uh, Christian students. Uh, I look forward to getting to talk with you, and maybe, Jerry, you know, you can arrange it. We can set up a time. We can have a dinner for our friends that's been coming over here to church. Uh, I saw a thumbs up for that one, right? But uh, Liz and I, Luke, who led worship, is my, is my son. Uh, his wife, Michelle, she's in the back. She, uh, director of services in, in our, our online experience and taking care of things and helps produce all of our services. But we had opportunity to go to South Korea. We actually spent a week in, uh, maybe a week and a half in Dandong, China, and uh, did a revival in a church, did a spiritual emphasis week. It's a, it was an American hospital, so we were able to preach and worship. Um, and went a doctor from South Korea who was a part of my church. I used to pastor in San Francisco. Uh, we were connected and went together and then got to spend some extended time in, uh, in Seoul. And so, anyway, I look forward to telling you our story, hearing your story. I know you've been visiting and being a part. just want to say thank you for coming and being a part of church. God's doing an awesome work right here in the Island Church. Amen? It has been incredible. What an incredible year we've just, uh, just gone through. Let me also say uh, to our winter family, it's that time of the year, we have people from all over the nation that make home. Uh, you know, when we're in our online experience, we always say welcome if you're from the North Coast or from the East Coast, the West Coast, or the Midwest, uh, we want to welcome you. So we have people really from all over that make this home for the winter. If you are one of our winter guests, snowbirds, would you lift your hand? We want to say welcome. Uh, we probably have a hundred or more folks that are part of our church. It's always great. You add so much. We look forward to you coming, uh, and, and that's for a month or two or three or four. We're just glad you make the Island Church home while you are, are here. And so this is always an exciting season. Man, we had an incredible, incredible Christmas season. Uh, it just seems like yesterday we did deck the halls, and now it's time for wreck the halls. But uh, we'll take, take everything down. But what an incredible time. You know on our Christmas Eve services... This place was packed, stand, like standing room only packed, two services, both services at 3.30 and at 5 o'clock. It was just an incredible time. Love Christmas, my favorite time of the year. And um, we're going to have an incredible new year. Look forward to everything God has. You know, when 2020 ended, it was like, man, Thank God 2020's over. I mean, who would have ever dreamed we'd have gone through those things? It was like, man, come on, 2021. And, it, and then it was like, oh, my goodness, what happened? We thought it was going to be really good, but it ended up in many ways, I mean, it was disaster, crisis. Who would have ever thought we would have gone through some of the things that we have gone through, the whole cancel, cancel culture, defund the police, 
the Afghanistan, I mean, who would have ever thought we would leave people behind, American citizens, allies, do what happened in Afghanistan, and the list goes on and on and on, and, and, and we're left shaking our heads. How is this happening in America? And it seems like the world is out of control. But I got great news for you. The message today is God is in control. Amen. I, 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 I guess the rain kept me from hearing. I didn't know if anybody responded. I said, God is in control. Amen. Amen. And so because God's in control, you know, we're going to talk about this. What the enemy meant for our harm, God turned for our good. In 2020, we thought, how are we going to survive? We're not having services. We're not taking offerings. What's going to happen? We ended up having more people come to know Christ than we'd seen before. God took care. It was the greatest year financially we'd had. Then we come to 2021, and do you know that this past year, and I've been pastoring for 40 years, about 40 years, Liz and I've been in, in pastoral type ministry, and I saw more people in church ministry come to know Jesus than I've ever seen in my life this past year. People are coming. Our church has our church is grown. Um, a few weeks ago, we in all of our service and venue opportunities, we had almost 1,100 people a part of the island church. People getting baptized, then sitting on the second row after that. How about that? <laughs> God's doing miracle after miracle. This is the greatest year we've ever known as a church. Which leads me to believe this. This is going to be a better year. You know why? I always believe the best is yet to come. God has awesome. He's got good things in store. And because God is in control, listen, then God's purposes prevail in my plans. I want you to hear that because I worked on putting that statement together in a, in a different fashion, in a unique fashion. I want you to hear what I'm really trying to communicate. God's purposes prevails in my plans. See, I got plans. You got plans. But it's not that my plans succeed, it's that his plans succeed. We're Americans, so we're some of the most selfish people on the planet. It's all about us. It's all about my plans, my finances, my life, and God cares. And God has a plan for our life. But you have to understand that God's at work in this world in a kingdom way. And he's working in his church, preparing his church. And what God is doing in his church and what God is doing in the kingdom in, in light of the end times, in light of the fact that Jesus is coming back, in light of all that, his kingdom, his plans, his church supersede mine. And it's hard for us to see that. Yes, God cares about you. Yes, God loves you. He's mindful of you. But God has a big plan, and he's working. He's working to see it all come together for his glory and his honor. And that is a good thing. That's a really good thing. You see, God's for us. God's at work, and he makes his ways Prevail. Are you still with me on this? You're going to have to listen good because the rain's competing a little bit. But here it is. In fact, with all the humidity and then with the, the uh, haze machine, the fire alarm went off. And, uh, you know, I'm the chaplain for the fire department. I called one of the firemen that was at church in the last service. I said, hey, hey, Booger, what are we going to do? And he said, just uh, hit Hit, hit the silence and hit the reset, and, and then the fire truck showed up outside, and they said, Pastor, we already got news. You were on fire this morning, and the fire alarm went off. So, hang on. Here we go. 
The Bible says this in Proverbs chapter 19 and verse 21. Many are the plans in the mind of a man. I got a lot of plans. But it is the purpose of the Lord that will stand. The purpose of the Lord will prevail. Would you agree that things do not always go as planned? And would you agree that God always has a better idea than we do? Now, we have our plans. And I'm not saying we shouldn't have plans. But God always has a better idea. And if he changes our plans, it's not for our detriment. Has anybody here ever had God change your plans? You had one plan. God had a different idea. How many people here, you didn't marry the person that you originally thought you were going to marry? Don't, don't lift your hand, please. I, I'm, I'm pretty tied up this week, and I can't do marriage counseling. Let's just keep this right here, all right? How many, you didn't marry the person you, you originally thought you was going to marry? I didn't. Man, the girl I thought I was going to marry, I was in the fourth grade. Her name was Teresa. She had glitter in her hair. Now, that should have been a sign to me right there that this wasn't going to go anywhere. But see, God had a better idea. There's a good-looking blonde sitting back there. And she's a godly gal. She loves God. She's the best Christian I know. She inspires me. She helps me to rise above, to do more and be better than what I really am. See, God had a plan. And it wasn't Teresa with glitter in her hair. It was Liz. Amen? Amen. You know, uh, we've got an, one of our elders. His name's Jim Bibby. And he's a dear friend of mine, and he's a deer hunting buddy of mine. But he often reminds me, Pastor, uh, we really love Liz, and we tolerate you. <laughs> well, you should be thankful that God had a plan. Amen. See, his plans always supersede or go above what my plans. When I was a kid, I had plans, you know. What did I aspire to be? When I was a kid, man, I, I had plans. I was going to be a rock star. And I practiced and I worked at it. I had a tennis racket and I'd play air guitar looking at that mirror in front of me in my bedroom. And I had a record player, played albums, got me one. My son got me one a couple of years ago and I'm starting my album collection, all the ones my mom threw away when I left home. And I had an 8-track, and man, I listened to Elvis, and I listened to Paul Revere and the Raiders, and man, I listened to the Doobie Brothers, and ZZ Top, and Leonard Skinner, and, and, and all these bands that, man, I'm going to be a rock star. Well, that didn't work out. And then, I was going to be an NFL quarterback. That's what I wanted to do. And that didn't work out. So then... I decide I'm going to be an NBA basketball player. And I'm going to be the starting point guard for the New York Knicks. I love the New York Knicks. Bill Bradley and Dave DeBusher and Willis Reed. And my favorite, too, was Walt Frazier, Clyde De, uh, Frazier. And then there was Earl the Pearl Monroe. And, man, I wanted to be a New York Knick. Well, guess what? That didn't work out. I'm 5'9". That didn't work out. God had a plan. He had a plan. And he knew where I would, I, would, I would fit. He knew where I would be valuable for his kingdom. It's not what I wanted. I, really, coach, I wanted to be a coach. Coaches impact me. My whole life was sports. I wanted to be a coach so bad. And here it's funny now, you know, and I'm 61, and I know some of you didn't know I was that old, and I appreciate your thoughts. But 
now I get to coach football. I get to be the character coach on, on the football team. It's kind of come full circle. But I, I love where God has me. I know where I function. See, God has plans, and he puts us in that place that, that we have value, that we have important for the kingdom. And so what happens is God's purposes prevail. Now, I'm not saying that we shouldn't have plans. I, I've got more plans than I've got time. You look at my calendar, and I've already double booked so many dates. There's so many weeks. I don't know how I'm going to get it all done. I, I plan. And, and do you make resolutions? Absolutely. I, I have goals. And I, man, I write them down. I have a personal, personal development strategy for my life. And I take it out of Scripture. It comes out of Luke chapter 2 and verse 52. And it says, it says this, And Jesus increased in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and man. And so I just divide that out. There's my personal development plan. I want to grow. I want to develop. And I take it out of, the, out of this scripture. This is how Jesus grew and developed. It says he increased in wisdom. So I have an intellectual development. There's, there's a plan to read more. Because leaders are readers. Readers are leaders. So I want to read more. I want to expand my mind. I don't want to become stagnant. You know, I want to have a fresh, freshness about me, a life. I don't want to get boring in life. And boring. How do you stay fresh? It's because you're growing and you're learning. You're not just doing the same things. You may do some of the same things, but you're adding too. And you're growing and you're developing. I, I study leadership. I study motivation. I study communication. I want to grow. I want to expand. I pray. One of my prayers is, God, expand my capacity to learn more. I don't want to hit the lid. I don't want to limit myself. I want to grow in wisdom. I want to grow intellectually. Then secondly, it says that he grew in stature. And so in my personal development plan, plan, I'm praying, and I'm planning, because see, if you don't pray and plan, if you don't plan, you're not going to do anything. And so, thinking about, but I'm active. I'm active in this. I ride my bike, I swim, I play golf, I help coach with a football team, I'm running up and down and all over the field, I'm hitting the sled at times with kids to help them. I'm going, going, going. I think everybody here knows 2017, I had a hip replaced, my right hip replaced in May. In December 2017, I had this knee replaced. And, and uh, when I turned 40, I had LASIK surgery on my eyes so I can see a country mile now. Kind of bionic guy is the way I look at it. I don't have a pain in my body. And what had kind of held me down a year after I got a new knee and a new hip, I did the mini version of a triathlon that happens down here on the beach in Gulf Shores every year. I go, 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 play, 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 active, but I want to grow. I want to lose a little bit of weight. I want to eat better. I've got a plan. We got a, Liz and I have an app. We've got a plan that we're working. I don't like it, but we got it. We're going to work on it. Because if you don't have a plan, you won't do it, Right? Maybe you heard this story. This could have actually happened in our house. But it's about a woman who walked into her bathroom at her home, and when she did, her, she saw her husband on the, ba on the bathroom scales, and he was sucking in his stomach. And the woman thought to herself, he thinks he's going to weigh less by sucking in his stomach. So she rather sarcastically said to her husband, that's not going to help you. He said, sure it will. It's the only way I can see the numbers. I've got a plan to be healthier. Jesus grew. What about this? He grew in favor with God. I've got a spiritual plan. 
Do you? Because if you don't plan to read your Bible, you're not going to. If you don't plan to pray, you're not going to. So you set up a strategy. How many, how many, we ask every, every year we ask this. How many here in this room, you lift up your hand, you say, you read your Bible through last year. Hold your hand up. We just want to honor you. Hold it up real high. Give those folks a big hand that read the Bible. Now some of you going like this. Hold that up there. I know you didn't do it for that. Yeah. We had numbers of people all day. Reading your Bible through doesn't make you more spiritual. And if you do what I'm about to tell you, or you don't, it's not an issue of your spirituality. But I'm asking you, would you consider reading your Bible through with Liz and I this year? Now, if you choose to do a word study or topical study, that's fine. Do that. But we're just saying, hey, will you join with us? It's just an opportunity. There's something, a, a spiritual discipline. See, it's not just reading the Word. You know what's important? It's not that we're just readers of the Word, but it's what? That we're doers of the Word. That, there's the spirituality. But see, you need to put the Word in you. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word. You put the Word in you. I'll hide God's Word in my heart that I will not sin against God. Are you with me? So, everybody got your phone? Take your phone out this morning. Take your phone, and uh, if, you will, if you will go to our Island Church text, our Island Church text, and I think everybody knows 251-244-2030, 251-244-2030. And if you give your heart to the Lord this morning, if you have a prayer need, you just say, you just, you just put on there, accepted Christ, next steps. If you got a prayer request, you put your prayer request there. If you got a praise, you can put your praise there. Here's what I'd ask you to do. Text that number, 251-244-2030, and, and put in that line, just put prayer. Or, excuse me, put Bible. Put the Bible. Not the Bible, just write Bible. And when you put Bible in there and you send it, in the next 15 to 30 seconds, there's going to be a link that pops up on your phone. And it's you version. It's the Bible. It's the Bible app. If you don't have the Bible app, it'll give you simple instructions on how to get the free app. But when you hit that, up will come and it'll say reading plan. Liz and I are going to read the Bible through. We're going to read it chronologically through this year. Now, here's what I like about this. I, I don't read the Bible on my phone. It's just, I just can't. It, 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 it's hard for me because I want to underline things, circle things. So I, I get my Bible out. I'm reading through the ESV. That's what we use in our preaching here. And so I, I get my Bible out, but I have my Bible out because it helps keep me on track on what day I'm on. But it also has this little emblem up top, and it helps me because I'm a little bit dyslexic and I'm a little bit uh, ADHD, and so it helps me because I hit that little button, and it reads it to me. So I'm looking at it in my Bible. I'm hearing it with my ear. I'm kind of getting a double dose, and it helps me to get it in me. And man, I got my pen out, and I'm circling and underlining, putting question marks by where I have questions, giving emphasis to things that really grab a hold of me, and that's how. I'm able to stay on track in how I walk through this. And we're just asking you to, to do that. See, it's a plan. And that plan helps me because if I don't plan, life gets busy. And if you don't, just something, and, and, and it was interesting, Paige, my daughter, our daughter, brought this up. Before she, what is it, Liz? Before she does social media, before she turns her phone on in the morning, she first of all, Reads your Bible. I thought, boy, that's a good plan. Because once you start into your social media, once you get distracted in all the stuff, once you start chasing those rabbit trails down the line of a, who's doing what and when they're doing it and what they're wearing and everything else, start with just finding out what God has to say. Putting it in our heart. It's just a thought. It's just something to help you. This isn't about legalism and it's not about condemnation. I just know if we don't have a plan, 
So we need to have a plan. And if there's anything that's God's will, plan, and purpose, it's that his word be established in our life. Somebody say a big amen. Now let me ask you this. Do you have a plan to pray? Have you set an appointment? See, if I have a dentist appointment, a doctor's appointment, if I've got a meeting with one of you, guess what? It goes down on my calendar. I'm going to be there. Coach asked me to come over to Mobile Christian to speak to the FCA group. It was at 7, 7 o'clock, 7 in the morning. That was fine. I get up early, Coach. But I had it on my calendar. Coach is texting, make sure I had it down. But I did to get there. See, if it's on the calendar, I'm going to do it. You need to put your appointment with God because it's the most important appointment you'll ever have. And if you don't set your appointment, it seems like we don't get around to doing it. So am I praying? Have I grown beyond God bless me, help me in my crisis? Oh, God, you know how bad I've been hurt. You know how, you know what he did, she did. You know this, you know that. You know, we get kind of stuck in our pity. And God cares. Don't, 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 don't think I'm hard or harsh or that God is. God cares. But we get stuck in our pity. God doesn't respond to pity. I'm sorry. He doesn't respond to pity. He responds to faith. So God, my faith's in you, and I believe you're going to help me through my pain. I believe you're going to help me in my marriage. I believe you're going to help me in my sickness. You're going to help me in my lack. You're going to help me to grow and to gain. And so we pray, and we got to move away from just, just me, my four, no more mentality and start praying kingdom things, kingdom principles. The kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Spirit. God, I need righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit established in my home, in my business, in my life, in my children. Lord, I start seeing things in a bigger way, if my people called by my name will humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways, talking about a nation and begin to stand in the gap on behalf of, uh, uh, of the millions of babies that's been murdered, begin to stand in the gap on behalf of, of all the abuse perversion, immorality that's in our nation. We begin to stand in the gap, not in accusation, not in pointing people, but saying, oh God, have mercy. You look for someone to stand in the gap. I'll stand in the gap. Have mercy. God, let there be revival. Start it in me. Bless my church. Bless America. God, help us. Amen. Some juncture, let's move beyond just, just this is all, I, all I'm thinking about. Just need more, more money, more money. It's usually the prayer. God has a way. He says this, seek first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness. And then these things will be added unto you. you. You see what I'm saying? And this is just under personal development. Spiritually, I must pray. I must have God's word. Let me ask you this. Do you have a fasting plan? Well, I'm going to fast. We've done 21-day fast. We fast the month of January. We, we've had different emphasis, done Daniel fast. Fasting is a part, should be a part of, of believers' lives. Do you know when Jesus taught, when he taught the disciples to pray, it says this, it said, he said, now when you pray, enter into your closet. Remember that? He did not say, if you pray. He said, when you pray. So the father assumes that we as his children pray. In that same passage, it says, when you give. So the father in heaven assumes that we are givers. In that same passage, it says, and when you fast. So the father in heaven assumes that we fast. The Bible says some kind goes not out but by Prayer and fasting. There's something about taking king flesh and putting it on the altar and taking the time that we would have spent eating or socializing together, taking that period of time and committing it to seeking God, to praying and asking God for whatever it is that is on your heart, that you're praying, that you're seeking him. And if it's greater intimacy, we're, 
when we're fasting, there's something about intimacy and closeness that takes place. Here's what I'd like to ask you to, to consider. You may want to fast the next 21 days. That's awesome. You may want to fast this month. You may, God may lead you on a 40-day fast. That's great. But here's what Liz and I have coveted to do for this year. We said, okay, let's fast three days each month. Sometimes when you say, I'm going to fast a week, it's like, I don't know if I can do that. And sometimes, obviously, people can't physically. They have physical ailments. They can't. So what do you do? Well, you can give up social media for that time or television. Sacrifice something and commit that time to seeking God. Liz and I are going to fast from food three days a month. All right? And we're going to give that time to seeking God. Seeking God. We'll put it out there and let you know three days that we identify. Love for you to join along with us. You establish your own days. But we said, you know what, if we do it three days, seven days seems like overwhelming. 21, oh my goodness, even if you get to have soup and salad, it's like, oh, that's such a long time. A month, 40 days, three days. We can do that. And think about it. If we do three days a month over a year's time, we fasted for over a month. 36 days. So, have a plan. When you fast, we, we need to have those times. I need God. We need God. Where do you learn how to, to, to see victory? You fight. You pray. You fast. You seek God. And so, there's got to be a plan. This is, our, this is my personal development plan. I have a plan for witnessing. Do you have a plan for witnessing? If we say, well, I'll just witness when those divine appointments come by, hopefully we take advantage of them. But you better sit and plan a, a motion, a decision. You know, one of the ways doing that is putting on the armor of God every day. We put on the helmet of salvation. We put on the breastplate of righteousness. Our loins are good about with truth. Our feet, are, are, we have on shoes a preparedness and a readiness to share the gospel of peace. Sword of the Spirit, shield of faith. Is there a readiness? Today, I'm ready. Let me ask you a question. How was your witnessing? How was your Bible reading? You know, every strategy needs to have a measurement to it. So how was your, how'd you do this year reading your Bible? How'd you do this year praying? How'd you do this year fasting? This is not about guilt or condemnation. It's saying, I want to grow. Are you with me on this? I want to grow. I, I, I want to challenge you. To grow in him. How was your witnessing? Who did you win to Christ this year? Who's in church because you asked them to come to church? And you asked them and you asked them. See, the Bible says you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Not power so you'll have doodads on top of your neck and say, Ooh, I felt Jesus, I felt Jesus, I felt Jesus. <laughs> that's, not, that's not why the Holy Spirit fell. Thank God for the dance. Thank God for the doodads. I don't, I don't want to mess you up. But the Holy Spirit was poured out to give me power to be a witness. So who did you witness to? Jesus said, go into the highways and hedges and compel people. Compel, restrain, to come in. Why that my house may be full? God gets glory. God gets glory when the church is packed. Who's in church today because of you? There's a whole other sermon, who's not in church because of you? <laughs> but that's not where we're going today. Who's in church because of you? Amen? God, use me. And I think about it. Who did I win to the Lord? And I think about who did I, who did I invite to church? Man, it's exciting seeing people come to know the Lord. It's exciting seeing people come to church. But you've got to have a plan. My dad pastored the same church 58 years. People loved him. He pastored a community larger than life, personality, loved God, fun, athletic, all those things. You would have loved him. I can't tell you how many times growing up I heard my dad at the end of service say, okay, folks, we're going to pray and be dismissed. But before we do, hey, how many have joined with me tomorrow 
Tomorrow, how many is going with me? The first person you meet when you go to work. First person you meet when you, when you get out of your house and get out and about. The very first person you meet, you're going to invite them to church or you're going to witness, you're going to give a witness of what Jesus has done in your life. You know what he was doing? There was a genius to it. I didn't see it then because I'd commit to it, be scared to death, but the next morning, man, I'd tell my friend about what God did in my life. I'd say, hey, let me tell you, this happened at church, and I want to tell you what something. I did it. I didn't get the genius of what he was doing. He was helping people plan to witness because if you don't plan it, you're going to miss the opportunity of it if you're not thinking about it. And do you know it's a primary purpose that God left us? Why he didn't just save us and kill us? He left us here to fill us with his Holy Spirit that we might be Christ ambassadors, representatives for him to win this world because he's coming back. Amen. So it's a big part. See, what I just told you is what I've heard all my life growing up. What we call them? Those New Year, New Year services. We're going to pray the old year out and pray the new in. Man, watch night. That's what it was. Anybody remember ever heard that watch night service? What did I hear? I need to pray. I need to read my Bible. I need to fast. I need to tell people about Jesus. I need to give. Liz and I have a giving strategy. And our giving strategy is this. Before we pay our mortgage, before we pay our water bill, electric bill, power bill, we first of all give our tithe and our offerings to the Lord. Because we believe. You say, well, it's just semantics. When you look down your bill pay and you go through there. No, I purposefully go to the island church first. Because there's something about first fruits that the Bible teaches. So he gets first. I don't give God the leftovers. What's left over after I pay my bills, he gets the first. It's called first fruit giving. That's our giving strategy. If you don't have a plan, you won't do it. I just want to help you. This is my personal development plan. God will help you in developing yours. And it might be because these are the basic fundamentals of Christian faith. So you set yourself up to win. Amen? Amen. This is not, please, please, please. Because I grew up in church my whole life, and I felt guilty my whole life. Guilt, guilt, guilt. Because I knew I wasn't reading, and I knew I wasn't praying, and I knew I wasn't listening, and I knew I wasn't doing what I was supposed to do. I'm not, I don't want you to have guilt. Lord, I took enough guilt for the whole church. I grew up in my Pentecostal preacher's home. You understand I know guilt. That's funnier than what you're acting right now. I survived. <laughs> Here's what I want you to know. This is not about guilt. I want to help you win. Just think what would happen if we lived this thing out. The Word of God, prayer, fasting, giving, witnessing. Just think what would happen, how it would affect our homes, how it would affect our work, how it would affect our business, how it would affect our community, our world. Amen. So it's not about not having plans. It's saying, God, here's my plans. Now, you direct my steps. Look at Proverbs 16.1. The plans of the heart belong to man, but the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. Well, what's that mean? Well, we make our plans, but here's what we want to do. We want to say, God, he's, he's saying he has the last word, so we just say, God, you have the last word. You have the last word. How about this? Look at this verse. Proverbs 16, 9. The heart of the man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. So it's, it's not us saying, God, here's my plans. Here's my business. Here's my marriage. Here's my family. Come and you bless my plans. No, it's God. I'm trying to have your heart, but I'm asking this. Help me to get my plans in line with your plans. I want to be a part of what you are blessing. So it's not so much just God come and bless me. I want to get all my life, everything in line with you. I want to be a part of what you are blessing. Liz and I have spent almost 40 years of ministry with this in mind. 
with this prayer. God, what's the next step? What's next? What's next for this church? What's next for our life? What's next for our family? What's next for our finance? God, what's the next step? That's a great way to look at it. We're right here right now. you got to know where you're at to know where you're going. If you know where you're going but you don't know where you're at, you don't know how to get there. So we know where we're at. We know where we want to be. So God, what's the next step for our marriage? How can we see our marriage reflect, be better, grow? It doesn't happen instantaneously, but steps, steps. God, what's the next step for my business? God, what's the next step for my relationships, my friendships? God, what's the next step in ministry? God, what's the next step in finances? Instead of praying, God, bless what I'm doing. God, help me to do what's your blessing. You see, my plans have limits. But what? Proverbs 19, 21. Many are the plans in the mind of the man, but it is the purposes of the Lord that will stand. I've got my plans. But God, they have limits. Your plans are unlimited. God, you can do anything with God. All things. It's not, hey, do whatever you want. You can do anything. No, with God, His plans, His way, all things are possible. We want to say, I can do anything. No, with God, I can do all things. Amen? Amen. Because God's in control, my, my problems have per- You know what? This is, I love this first Sunday of the year. <clears throat> you know, uh, Christmas Eve service, I guess in the, one, of the, one of the services, the first service, there was a big boom. Did anybody in that service hear that? I didn't hear it. There was a big boom. And the projector that shines all the words and the, has the clock on the back blew up. Boom, it's gone. <laughs> it's the greatest day in the world for me. There's no clock on the back wall today. <laughs> I'm telling you, God is so good, is he not? I thought, what a day. First service, Luke slipped in beside me. He said, hey, Dad, uh, just a reminder, there's no clock on the back. You're going to have to hit your phone to keep, keep track of time. So I recognize what time it is, but let me throw this at you real quick. Problems have purposes because God's in control. See, getting saved doesn't keep you free from problems. Being righteous, being a good Christian doesn't keep you free from problems. Jeremiah was a good, he's a good boy. He was a good man, but it didn't keep him from being taken into exile with the rest of them. You know, things happen in life. Struggle happens in life. Life is not a series of random events with no meaning. Accidents that just come and go. Life has meaning. Life has purpose. But here's what I know. Because God is in control, whatever comes my way, I know it's Father filtered. He didn't cause it. He did not cause it. But he allows it. To help me to grow, to perfect, to work in me. See, if I've always got jingle in my pocket and take gas that's full, and he provides and takes care. But there's a tendency not to trust God. Prosperity sometimes is the biggest struggle we have because we're so blessed, we don't need to trust God. Let me just tell you, it doesn't matter how blessed you are, crisis can come and it can come out of left field. It can hit you. Everything going good. And if you're not grounded in God, you're not praying and getting the word in you in the good times, building faith up. If you're not faithful to church, it's amazing how many people wait until crisis to run to God. But that's human nature. Most of us in this room today, we're here. We went through crisis. We ran to God. And now we're following after him. I'm not mocking and make fun of it, but it's usually what happens. Get, get it grounded because life happens. 
Some of you are suffering, and it's because of the decisions that someone else made, and it affected your life. Some of you are suffering because of the dumb decisions you made, and you're reaping the consequences. And God's grace and his forgiveness is there, but it doesn't always cancel the consequences of our actions, of our sins. God gives us a grace in those consequences. But there's consequence for decisions we make. We live in a world that doesn't want any consequence. But many times it's through that that we come to understand and know what I believe is the greatest compensation clause in all of Scripture. How many people love God? Amen? Listen to this. Romans 8, 28. And we know for those who love God, if you love God, you love God, surrender, love you, Lord, follow and serving you, all things work together for the good. It doesn't say all things are good because all things are not good. But it says all things will work for the good. To those who are called according to, here's this word, to what? His purpose. Let your purpose. Hey, Paul's in prison. Talk about a radical salvation. He had persecuted, killed Christians. He was on the road to Damascus. There was a bright light. God touched him. Radical, epiphany, salvation. He finds himself in prison. That's not good. But God worked Things for his good and actually for our good. Because he wrote over half the New Testament from prison. We have the New Testament, so much of the New Testament, because of what this man went through. And if he wasn't in prison, he was an activist. Man, if there was a debate, he was showing up. He was giving a defense for the gospel. He was brilliant. He was brilliant. Smartest man of his day. He would have been there. He's in prison. It worked out for his good. It worked out for our good because we learned so much, so much, so much from him. God could have told the Pharaoh, just say yes, let the people go. But he didn't make him do that. And the plagues came, but it all worked out for Moses and for the children of Israel's good. Man, there were plagues that happened, and it was, it was some intense days. But it worked out because when they got ready to leave, the, the Egyptian people were so glad they were leaving. They said, please leave. They lined up on the street and started giving them all their money and jewelry. Please, just get out of town. Take this. Take this. Worked out for their good, didn't it? Sure. What about Joseph. Joseph didn't deserve. In fact, Joseph, there's not a dark page written on his entire life. He finds himself thrown into a pit by his brothers because they were jealous of him. Then he ends up having a place of favor. He does good things, and because of that, he ends up in prison. And then he comes back to promise them. Potiphar, in Potiphar's house, the pit, the prison, the pit, prison, to the palace. It's a pretty sad story until finally he rises to that place, second in command, and when his brothers come and they're in need of food, he said, I know you, you meant this for my harm. But God's turned it from a good. See, when you know God, when he's in control, whatever happens. Liz and I learned this phrase years and years ago. And we've lived by it. And we say it to one another. God keeps the books. Life's unfair. If you, you've heard me say this. If you ask my kids, they've got their dad-isms. They say, you know, what, what do you remember from growing up? What dad say? First thing you're going to say, drink more water. That's what dad always said, drink more water. I don't feel good, drink more water. Most of us are dehydrated. You drink more water, you feel better. So the answer to all their sickness was drink more water. The second thing 
was this. Dad, I don't feel like going to school. Dad, I don't feel like going to church. Son, life's hard, then you die. Get in the car. We're going to church. So if you ask him, what did Dad say? Drink more water. Life's hard, and then you die. And you know what? There's a lot of truth to that. Life's hard, then you die. They have your funeral. Then they go to the fellowship hall. They eat some potato salad. They tell stories about you. They go home. They forget you. That's life. Don't think it's going to be more. It's not. That's okay. I'm in heaven. I don't care what you do. Amen? Here's what, I, here's what I'm saying in all that. Is this life is hard. God keeps the books. When you love him, he has a way of working this for your good to help you. Listen to these scriptures. I know i got to close. Just listen to these scriptures. 1 Peter 1, 6 and 7. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials. I've been there. How about you? So that the tested genuineness of your faith, more than gold that perishes, though it's tested by fire, be found to result in the praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen? Oh, I'm tested. Various trials. But it's all going to come around. And I do it his way. He's going to receive glory. See, in, in my testing, in my struggle, in the injustices of life, in what I face, if I do it right, it's going to give him glory and honor, and it's going to be a testimony to others. Hello? What about this? 2 Corinthians 4, 16, 17. So we do not lose heart. Don't quit. Please don't quit. Don't quit, God. Don't quit church. Don't quit your marriage. Fight for your marriage. Be faithful. Hang in there. Keep going. We do not lose heart. Though the outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. I love these words. For this light momentary affliction. The affliction. I love the way he puts it. Light momentary. But this affliction, this light momentary affliction, what's it doing? It's preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. We face difficulties, but my problems have purpose. I will see the faithfulness of God. I will see the faithfulness of God. Amen. I do overcome. I am more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ who loved me. If God is for me, it don't matter who's against me. Amen. I win when I do it his way. I win. Problems have purpose. Amen. Liz, join me. While Liz is coming, let me just say this. Prayer is powerful. Prayer is powerful. Don't give up praying. Don't give up because God is in control. Prayer is powerful. God's in control. Keep praying. Do you know that all of us are in this room? All of us are serving Jesus, following him because somebody prayed for us. Anybody give that to you? Somebody prayed for you and you know that's why you love God, serve God. You've made it so far. Amen. Don't stop praying. Prayer is powerful. He's, he's the one. Your scriptures are in your notes there on your U version. Make sure and write these notes down. But understand this. He's able to do exceeding abundantly above all we could think or even ask. God's word is powerful. His Holy Spirit, he gives us power. Amen? Listen, let me give you the scripture concerning the word of God. The word of God is living and active. It's living and active. Thank you, Lord. It's living and active and sharper than a two-edged sword. Amen? Don't stop Prayer is powerful. The Holy Spirit is power. God's word is powerful. We stand in it in Jesus' name. What a way to live this new year. How many are glad you came to church? How many of you say, I received the word of God with gladness today? Amen? 
Amen. Amen. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. We're going to take communion in just a moment. But before we do, let me ask you, is there anyone in this service, you'd say, Pastor, I, I know I need to commit, dedicate, resurrender my life to Jesus this morning. I feel a tug in my heart. Maybe you've never given your life to Christ. Maybe at one time you did. It was at a Sunday school, a daily vacation Bible school, a youth camp. You've grown cold and distant. You know God's tugging at your heart to resurrender, to rededicate your life. Would you just lift your hand and say, Pastor, pray for me this morning. I need to surrender my life. I need to rededicate my life. Thank you. Just hold it up till I see it back then. I, God's tugging at my heart today. I need to surrender, give my life to the Lord. There are others. Just a second, you join with these who've lifted their hand. Who else in this place? You know God's tugging at your heart. Don't miss this moment. Stand with me. And let's pray with those who've... Amen. I didn't. There's others that's lifted their hand. If you lifted your hand, if I saw it or if I didn't, pray this with us today. We, and, and understand, we don't believe in easy believism, cheap grace. We just understand that, and while I was yet a sinner, Christ Jesus died for me. That the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. That all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But if we will confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart God raised Jesus from the dead, we will be saved. And that's what the Bible says. That's a plan. It's a step to the greatest relationship and fellowship. Fellowship. I don't just have a relationship. I have fellowship. Fellowship with my Father. Father, thank you for those who lifted their hand who are making this commitment, who are saying yes to that knocking at their heart. Thank you that while we were sinners, you died for us. Thank you today that your word says if we will confess with our mouth that you're our Savior, yes, you, you saved me. You do for me what I couldn't do for myself. You saved me, and then you're my Lord. I'm not just saved from going to hell. But you're my Lord. You lead me. You're in charge. You call the shots. I surrender. All to Jesus I surrender. Be in charge of my life. And then I thank you for dying on a cross. And I thank you for the resurrection. By the power of God you rose from, my, rose from the dead. And you said if I confess these things and believe these things that I'm saved. So I say yes. Thank you for saving me today. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Do you know, it really is that simple. Religion complicates it, but it's that simple. There's that number again, 251-244-2030, and if you'll type next, we're going to send you seven steps to help you in what you just did in praying to say, Jesus, be the Lord of our life. We'll call you. There'll be a, one of our pastors. We'll pray with you. We'll help you. We'll answer questions. We'll get you a Bible. Anything and everything you need. We want to help you with this. You let us know. I love this. I love this. Don't you? Amen. Well, we serve open communion here at the Island Church, which means this. You don't have to be a member of this church. We ask that you be a member of the body of Christ. Our ushers are coming forward, and if you did not receive one of the elements and you'd like to partake of communion with us, if you'll just lift your hand, they'll get you, they'll get you an, the elements. I love this. I think it's a great way to start the new year. You know, at, East, at Christmas, we talk a lot about Easter because you can't separate Chris, Christmas and Easter. You don't have... You don't have this resurrection, you don't have this last supper if you don't have the incarnation and the virgin birth. The Bible tells us this, 
The Bible says that without the shedding of blood, there's no remission, there's no answer for sin. So think about this. Before the foundations of the world, there was a plan to redeem mankind. Man couldn't answer man's problem because in Adam, we're all born in Adam, we're all born in sin. And the Bible says in Adam all die. The wages of sin is death. So man couldn't answer man's problem. God couldn't die for mankind, couldn't relate. God is a spirit. They that worship God, worship Him in spirit and truth. A spirit has no blood. So God became flesh, the incarnation. God became flesh. Why did He become flesh? Why did He become like us? So He could shed His blood to cover our sins. God became flesh, shed His blood. Whose blood was in that baby in Mary's womb? You should know because I've preached it every Sunday through Christmas. It was the blood of God. The blood of God is in Jesus. He is born of Mary, a human. He is the perfect God-man. The only one. By one man's sin entered, by one man righteousness has come. What an incredible gospel story. It's the story of the virgin birth, the incarnation, sinless life, death on the cross, and his resurrection. It all goes together. The perfect one. See, Jesus did for me what I couldn't do for myself. We all think, as Americans, we can buy it or we can talk our way or we're somehow a little better than everybody else. There's nothing we could do. All have sinned. doesn't matter if you're in a third world country and you've got dirt floors and you don't have anything to eat. Or you live in the lap of luxury. All have sinned. We all need a Savior. Good news. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior that shall be for all people. Amen. Isn't that awesome? Thank you, Jesus. Great way to start the new year. His body broken. They crammed a crown of thorns down on his head. Big old thorn shoved it on him. They beat him, 39 stripes. They believe if you gave 40, you'd kill a man. They beat him within an inch of his life, ripped flesh from his body, boxed him, slapped him, pulled his beard, mocked him, blindfolded him, hit him. If you're God, you're so, so all that, tell us who hit you. He took this bread with his disciples and he broke it. And he said, this is my body which is broken for you. Now remember, remember this. Broken. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. By stripes were healed. He was broken so I don't have to live a schizophrenic, fear-filled, anxiety-filled life. I've got a peace that passes all understanding. If you need that, reach out and claim that today. That's what this is about. I don't have to live a schizophrenic life. Think I'm one thing publicly, live another way privately, compartmentalize my life. This is my work life. This is my dating life. This is my recreation life. This is my church. You don't have to live a schizophrenic life. He came to make us whole. Amen? Amen. Man, this is so, is this not the best news that we know anything about? Is this not awesome? He just said, I did this for you. I love you. All I'm asking is that you remember me. Don't forget it. Don't forget it. So he took the bread and he broke it and he gave thanks. Let's just say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for you be, your body broken for me. Thank you for what you did at the cross. I remember and I will not forget. Amen. Break that little piece of bread. He broke it, gave thanks, and they partook. Amen. Guys, can you help me in the back sound? 
I'm going to stand close. I didn't do this near the services, but I want Liz to pray. Just pray right here close. It's looking like she's going to kiss me on the cheek. She's just talking in this mic, all right? But pray for us, would you please? Jesus, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for being willing yes. to come and become human and lay down the authority and the, the splendor of your dwelling place in heaven. You loved us so much that you suffered and you bled and you were willing to do it because you loved us. God, I just thank you for your blood. I thank you for what it represents. I thank you for the fact that our sin is forgiven. Yes. That we are cleansed from all unrighteousness. Um, that you make us whole and that you give us eternal life. And we know that that is nothing we can work up in ourselves, Lord. Yeah. We rely completely on you and we just say thank you and we do remember what you did for us, Lord. And we just love you and we thank you. Amen. Let's partake of the cup together. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Can let's just with our mouth, the Bible says the fruit of our lips, offering up a sacrifice. Can we just praise the Lord out loud? Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for all that you came to accomplish for us. I love you. You're worthy. We would join with the host of heaven to declare, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. The whole earth is full of your glory. I love you, Lord. I bless you and I praise you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Can we clap our hands and give praise? Just give a shout. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Lord. Worthy, righteous, holy are you, Lord. Lord, I pray blessing on this church in this new year. Church, Liz and I pray you have a blessed, healthy, prosperous. God, be glorified. Let your pur purposes be established in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, do me this favor. Drop this in the trash can in the back, not the offering bucket. It, it, it would, don't want to get the juice on the money. All right? God bless you. Happy New Year, everyone. Thanks for being at the Island Church. We're so glad you joined us today for Worship and Word. If you prayed with us to commit your life to Christ or you want to know more, text the word NEXT to 251-244-2030. We want to celebrate with you and help you in what comes next. Don't forget to click connect on our website if you're new. And to join us in giving, you can text Island Give to 77977 or visit the islandchurch.tv slash give. We pray you have an awesome week.